Hi, I'm Justin Mason at Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today, we're gonna answer the question, which compact SUV should you buy? We have the Toyota RAV4 or the Lexus NX250. But also, in my hand, I have this little Lexus briefcase. And maybe right now you should pause the video and put in the comments what you think is in here. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna open it up and reveal what's inside. But before we get into the video, make sure you like and subscribe and head over to our sister channel, Performance Toyota, to go over some more Toyota-related content with Hillary from Toyota. So looking at the RAV4 first, the RAV4 to me is a little bit of an optical illusion. The reason I say that is when you get up, when you're up close to it, the front end seems very large, it's very tall, it's very wide, but as you get further away, it sort of shrinks. And I don't know, I don't know if that's just me, maybe put in the comments below if that happens to you as well, but even from farther away beside the NX250, the, yeah, it just looks a little bit smaller. But looking up close, let's go over some of the details. So we have the textured plastic that goes almost halfway up that front grille. Now this, although it doesn't look as flattering, is very useful, very functional, because anybody that lives on a dirt road or off of a dirt road or has a dirt driveway or a stone driveway or stone road, this being the textured plastic meaning means that you wouldn't have to touch up those pesky stone chips as much as if it was a painted plastic. Now, the painted plastic does appear about halfway up and immediately turns into the textured plastic grill again, but all the surrounding is the painted plastic. Now, before anybody makes a big deal, both of these cars today are covered in water droplets because in Canada, springtime, it's just always raining this year. I don't know why. And I was gonna do the video in an umbrella, but I thought, you know, we'll just leave the cars soaking wet like they were when I pulled them in here today. Uh, also on that front end, we have the Toyota emblem and the vehicle we're using today to compare is a RAV4 hybrid, mainly because the Toyota dealership next door didn't have any other RAV4s for us to review today. So you can tell that it's the hybrid by the blue little bits around the Toyota emblem. I've noticed Lexus does this as well on the key, the emblem on the key, as well as the front emblem. Uh, just not as, not as much, I don't know why. It's not as bright of blue as the Toyota version. So that's an interesting little thing and you can always tell it's a hybrid by the blue emblem. Okay, but zooming back out, we have the headlight design where the LED is below all the other accent lighting and accent sort of decorations here with a little bit of chrome. And when you get up close to it, the chrome is a little bit textured. We have a side marker light there as well. And the headlight housing itself is actually quite large. The hood has, you know, a couple nice visual lines to it that are sort of spaced out, they're sort of pushed out to the side where it's almost like the fender comes into the hood and it's very useful for when driving. It gives you a little bit of idea of where that bumper, or sorry, where the car starts and stops. This package is the XLE premium package or upgrade package and that means it also does have LED lights down in the corner there. Now over to the NX250. Now the NX250 is a base model of the NX lineup and Looking at that front end, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to really tell that it's a base model. So we do have some textured plastic at the bottom. We also have some fog lights, a really nice venting decoration there, and a grill that's surrounded by sort of a pearlescent gray color. And actually the whole, gr the whole grill itself is the gray color. It is a big grill. It's not quite the spindle grill that we see on the F-Sport models. And I've just realized, I've said the word grill like 10 times by this point in the video, but, that's okay. That's just car talk, I guess you could say. So we do have, it's more of a, a vertical lines for that center than the horizontal ones. And we do have the daytime railing lights above the LED lights and it looks really sharp. Even though it's a base model, the headlights don't look base model at all. So frosted daytime running light, LED lights underneath that and the signal integrated as well. And the front end just makes the vehicle look a lot bigger than it really is. And I've always been a big fan of that in the new NX. We have a chromed out Lexus emblem. And even actually, even when I'm standing here, I realize how much this little 
spoiler here that's, that's supposed to look like it's sucking in all the air into the vent, sticks out, and again, just looks really sporty, even though this isn't necessarily a sport model. Also, the hood does have some nice body lines that are a little bit more exaggerated, a little bit more vertical drop there, and they sort of wrap around a little bit more rounded than the Toyota version of it. Okay, now for the side profile of the NX, and this is where form over function starts to play a little bit of a role. So we have a very sleek and sporty silhouette. You'll even notice that a pillar sort of just continues on in a very fluid motion to the back of the vehicle and makes it look more like a sporty hatchback than a big SUV. We have the, the windows on the side surrounded fully by chrome, a little bit of chrome on that mirror as well, and a ton of gorgeous body lines, which because this is in the caviar black color, you don't see as much of the body lines. Hopefully they show up well on camera. The silver and pearl whites do show off that a little bit more, but we have this gorgeous line right down the center and my favorite door handle, the E-latch. So instead of having a door handle that moves, it does have just the button inside that make all the electronics open up and more importantly, when you go to leave the car, so much better, so much more smooth, and I love it. Uh, we do have an 18 inch two-tone wheel here now. The previous model NX, whenever I saw an 18 inch on one of those, it didn't seem like a big deal. It kind of seemed like it suited it. On this base model, I think because I'm so used to all the other packages that have the 20 inch wheels, it seems like the 18 inch is really small, but it makes for a very smooth ride. So that's the benefit. We do have some textured plastic here around the fenders as well as at the bottom and the rear fender. So that adds a little bit of protection there. But overall, you'll see it's form over function. It looks very sporty. It's got really nice body lines, especially even getting into this rear quarter here. And overall looks very much like the luxury SUV that it is. Now, over to the RAV4. A Little bit more function over form here, which is totally fine. So we still have some of that matte plastic um, on the fenders as well as down at the bottom of the vehicle. We also have an all-wheel drive emblem down there, which is kind of funny that they needed to specify that on the side, probably because you can get a RAV4 that's two-wheel drive, so it's a nice differentiator. We have another 18-inch wheel, but it's more like a, a painted gray color as well. And in terms of silhouette, we have a little bit steeper roof that you know sort of flattens out instead of having curved the whole way and then squares off again. It makes the vehicle look a lot taller because it is a lot taller. It's more about function, you know? It gives you a little bit more of that height, a little bit more of that utility. The door handles are just door handles. They're not electronic. Um, they do feel, you know, like a Toyota door handle always has. So no big changes there. We have chrome at the top of those windows and sort of like a, a painted plastic at the bottom. A little bit of chrome on the mirrors as well. And this part, this panel back here is huge. Like this is massive. We have a big window here as well. That just shows how big that trunk and cargo area is. And a little bit of curvature here, but mostly just big space for all that cargo inside. Now looking at the rear of the RAV4 with the taillights on. So we have a little bit of a, almost like a hockey sh stick shape design, which is quite fitting for us here in Canada. And I don't know if it's LED in there, but the decorations, there is a lot of depth to these taillights. They're not just clean cut frosted glass. Inside there's more of a honeycomb type design that almost create a little bit of moving illusion, like depending on what angle you're on. We have a little wiper in the center of this very big rear windshield. Obviously the little blue Toyota emblem there, RAV4 on one side, XLE hybrid on the other. A little bit of more textured plastic here and a little bit of decorations as well. Power tailgate in this package. But now for the golf club test. So trying to fit this driver in. It's, it won't fit by itself. So it's not wide enough to let it fit in without a little bit of an angle. But once it's in, tons of room there. Uh, actually, even from one side to the other, there still is a huge gap. Now for the length, using my little measuring stick here, it's not too bad. We only have maybe maybe five or six inches of you know over, overlay there. So 
really big space for the cargo area in the RAV4, and there's a really big height as well. Now, in terms of other features back here, we have a 12 volt outlet. We have a little storage spot off to the side, and that's pretty much it. No hooks for groceries, none of that stuff, just wide open space for you to be able to put all of the camping gear, whatever you need your RAV4. A little bit of storage under here with a full size spare tire as well. So overall, very useful back end on the RAV4. Okay, now for the back of the NX250, we have this gorgeous frosted LED tail light. So a little bit of that Lexus L on each side, uh, which kind of connects by this floating centerpiece here, very similar to the Lexus flagship SUV LX600. So I love to see that all the way in a base model here. L-E-X-U-S in the center, looks very classy. We have NX250 all wheel drive in the bottom right corner. Still some plastic or some textured plastic decorations towards the bottom of the bumper with some painted bits as well and a little venting there on the side. Single little wiper here in the center of a very small rear glass. However, when you're in the car, it doesn't seem small. It still gives you as much vision as you need, which is nice. The tailgate is manual on this base model, uh, so it's very smooth because you're doing it yourself. And inside, let's try out the golf club test. So, definitely not quite as wide as the RAV4. Once we angle it in there, there is enough room side to side. Now let's go for length here. So I do have more overhang than in the RAV4. So there is definitely a more wider and longer rear cargo space in the RAV4, but still very useful here. Still a really nice height here as well. We have some grocery hooks. We have some 12 volt outlets, a little bit of cargo space on each side. Um, obviously these are just the Lexus sort of medic kits and little booklets and stuff like that. Underneath the floor, if you can get the little carpet up, there is a full size spare tire and a little bit of cargo space. Uh, not a ton, but you could put some stuff down there, maybe some microfibers, something like that as well. So a little bit, again, more form over function. Okay, now sitting in the RAV4 XLE. So this is the premium package, which gives you the Softex leather, which you can see right away. But actually the first thing that I noticed with the inside of the RAV4, and I love it. I, I think I would love it even if I drove it every single day, is when I went to shut the door just now, I noticed the inside of the handle is a very grippy rubber. And I see this rubber also on the climate controls and the climate controls even kind of look like a tire, like the way the tread is. Same with the volume knob, like really beefy knobs that are grippy and soft. And it's kind of cool that no one else has done that before. So I hope that doesn't wear out over time. I'm sure it won't. Uh, even in the center here, there's different drive modes and that it even has the grippy rubber, which is kind of cool. Okay, how does everything else feel? So we do have just some regular plastic on some of the door panels. There are some softer, you know, softer, more injected plastic bits, which is nice. We have the regular shifter that you just squeeze and put into drive. I already mentioned the different drive gear, or sorry, the different drive modes is there. Also a very grippy little storage space with the 12 volt and a, an old school, what I call old school USB up here. Above that, we have the heated seats, uh, which is a switch. The nice thing about a switch heated seat is you can just leave it on all the time. And every time you get in the car, it'll automatically be on because you've left it that way. Center armrest has two USB-Cs in there. We have pretty deep cup holders in the center here um, with, again, that same, it's not a textured rubber in the bottom of the cup holder thing, but it still kind of fits the theme. A little bit of stitching here across the dash. Nothing surprisingly that feels cheap. Like everything does feel really well put together. Even, you know, the steering wheel and the textures around the steering wheel. We have some steering wheel controls here. Everything from the radar cruise to your media and some also some hidden buttons down here. One of them is the heated wipers, which is really important. The, the wiper de-icer, heated steering wheels down there as well, uh, along with some dimming switches and stuff like that. But overall, it feels very tall in here. It feels bigger than I thought. It kind of more feels like a midsize SUV or sort of a small Highlander. I think that's what maybe Toyota was going for when they designed this is that it's like a little baby Highlander, I think. Uh, also, there is this little shelf here too, which is also a very Highlander-like thing. I remember, you know, the 2015 Highlander even had that as well. So overall, lots of space, a decent amount of 
design and, and a lot of function in here, I would say overall. Okay, sitting in the back seat of the RAV4, I have a ton of headroom. That really shows that side profile, how tall the RAV4 is. I'm really feeling that now sitting in the back seat. Um, in terms of, you know what? I just noticed the inside of the door handles back here doesn't feel as grippy as the front. I don't know what that's about, but anyway, back here I have some vents. I have some USB C's in the center. Decent amount of leg room. I'm 6'1", my head is fine, my legs is fine. I have a center armrest with some cup holders. So it's, it's nothing crazy back here, but very functional. You could fit another couple people back here. You know, this one has a little bit of a, a pocket there behind the passenger seats. Overall, it does the trick. Okay, sitting in the NX250, even for a base model, there is a lot to go over here. So one of the things I notice as soon as I sit down is my eyes goes towards this beautiful decoration of trim panel, I guess you could say, on the door panel. It looks very modern. There's a nice pattern to it. It's very artsy, I guess you could say. On the door handle or on the door panel, the rest is, you know, some nice soft leathers uh, with some stitching and of course the electronic door handle, which I love. And, you know, nothing too special around the door switch panel. Into the center, we have some piano black followed by the Lexus shifter, which it's nice that even on this base model, this shifter is on, you know, the flagships like the LC500, the LS, obviously the new RX, the, you know, everything is, and it's the one that you put it into like a gear and then let go and it snaps back. And then to put it in park, you press the P. So it's nice that even on a base model, you know, compact SUV, we still have a very high end feature like that. We have some buttons underneath it, uh, you know, brake hold, uh, the auto off feature, you can override and turn that off. So that's when you're at a red light and the engine shuts off to save on, you know, idling. Some people hate it. I got used to it and I love it now. Uh, but that's your own opinion. Downhill assist, a train button, as well as traction control off, and then the electronic parking. We have the center armrest that folds both ways. We have our drive select switch, which is eco, normal, and sport in a very easy to use spot. I find where my hand rests is sort of just right there, so it's not a distraction whatsoever. We have this little shelf that fits a phone perfectly and opens up to a small cavity in here that also has a cigarette lighter plug. And then there's this little shelf here, which I don't really know what it's for because it's so small, um, but that's really the only spot you find a cheaper feeling plastic is this little, this little shelf right here. Everything else that you touch and see is a high-end material, which is nice. We also have USB-C and a regular USB right beside it, some vents above that, and a smaller screen than in you know, the NX, most of the NX 350s. However, it's still the same uh, sort of platform, platform operating system, uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, both wireless, works flawlessly. The days of having to pay extra for built-in navigation are over because of that great software and, you know, sort of system. The steering wheel, really nice material, very soft, uh, very durable. We have all the things, you know, cruise control related, as well as different, you know, modes for your radio and all of that stuff and the Bluetooth, uh, all right there, very easy to get used to. A couple paddle shifters, automatic headlights, and even in the NX250 base, we have things like radar cruise control, lane departure alert, pre-collision systems, auto high beams, all of the safety stuff. Lexus doesn't make you pay extra for that, which I've always really appreciated. But overall, just paying attention to the fact that nothing in here feels tacky, nothing feels cheap, other than that little, that weird little shelf here. And for a base model, very well done, Lexus. I'm very impressed. It is, you know, the climate control is a little bit different than the higher models, where the higher models have a more beautiful sort of way of displaying it. But still, overall, really good job. I'm very happy with this interior. The backseat of the NX is kind of exactly what you would expect. So I'm 6'1", I have a decent amount of headroom. Uh, also, I should mention the NX250 doesn't have any sunroof. Just, I, I'm gonna point that out now. So I do have a decent amount of headroom. My legs are still clearing the front seat, so I do have some space there. We still have some of the nice accents on the door panel. We still have the electronic door handles back here. Again, nothing, nothing feels cheap from what I can see. And actually, I've sat in the back seat of NX's multiple times. I've never noticed that the USB-C plugs 
light up. So if you're sitting back here and you're on a car ride and you're like, where do I plug in my phone? They actually light up. There's a little circle around them, which is kind of cool in this, uh, towards the bottom there. We have a little armrest that folds out. Not much of a hump in the center. We still have some piano black trim pieces around. Uh, and more importantly, I just found a bit of plastic that hasn't been taken off this car yet. So I'm gonna just take that off gracefully because that never gets old. It's like when you buy a new TV and you get to take the plastic off, that never gets old. It doesn't matter how many years you've been at a dealership, that's still pretty cool. Even though I can't smell the new car smell anymore, anymore this will always be here for me. Uh, so yeah, overall, that's the back of the NX250. And now for the moment you've been waiting for. What's in this little briefcase? I'm just kidding. Before that, let's wrap up the rest of the video. So you're asking yourself which car to go with, the RAV4 in like an XLE combination or the NX250 base. Now, even price-wise, the NX250 base is gonna come in around that 50,000, 51,000. And the RAV4 in the gas variation is almost 10,000 less. They both have the same 2.5 liter four cylinder. They both have all wheel drive. Uh, this one has leather perforated. This one just has regular leather at that price point or soft tax leather, I should say. I would say the buyer for the NX is going to prefer the styling and the you know more luxury built ride quality as well as materials, even though they're paying a little bit extra for it. The RAV4 buyer, I would say, is someone who still likes the size and decent amount of styling, things like you know the Softex leather seats, but way more prefers the function over the form. So that bigger chunk space, the bigger seat space in the back, that higher roof line, all those things that are more you know for the lifestyles that they live. So which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. And now for the real reveal of what is in this little Lexus suitcase. And we'll see if you were right when you guessed it. Dun, 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 dun. It's Domino's. I, that's what they're called, right? Domino's? I know it's a pizza place. But the little Domino game. We have, there's no Lexus emblems on them, but they have this little decoration in the middle, which is kind of nice. And it comes in a little Lexus briefcase. So. If you come and buy a Lexus, maybe I can throw one of these in. If you say that you saw this video, that is. All right, thank you everybody for watching. I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Make sure you subscribe so that you can see all of our other videos that we have coming down the pipeline. And of course, go over to our Performance Toyota page to see Hillary go over some more of the Toyota content. Thank you for watching and we'll talk to you next time. Take care.